Michael Robinson, Super Bowl champion, NFL analyst. We created something called the Rookie Report, and it was kind of ran by the team website. And uh, it went on, the next year it turned into the Robinson Report, and then it, it went on until I was released in 2010. Well, uh, 2011 was the lockout, and I had an idea to kind of bring it back uh, while we were locked out. After we kind of, we weren't locked out again, I, you know, kind of just sitting in front of my locker one day. And I had my camera, you know what I mean? And I'm just like, hey, you know. And I just put it up and started taping during our media hour. Is this is the Real Robinson Report. I finally got on it. Absolutely. I've always been watching from the background. I kind of wanted to be on it. As an athlete, having a YouTube channel is perfect. How else can you control your own message? You know what I mean? Uh, I think as athletes, we don't necessarily understand the fact that uh, we do have power as an athlete. You can better kind of craft what you want to say if you have your own channel. You know, you can edit, you can do things to it so that you can make sure the message you want out there is, is reaching the necessary people and it's out there the right way. I personally feel that in the next 20, 10 to 20 years, all of entertainment, news, sports, all of it will be online. And YouTube, cost efficiently, uh, provides us with the platform to put out a quality show. Pete Carroll and I, we, we had some interesting conversations about the channel. At first, his main concern was, was it going to take away from my football? Um, and so what happened was the first year of me having the show in Seattle, I went to the Pro Bowl. And uh, so that kind of took care of that. We do have some rules and, and some things that... Uh, that maybe not all YouTube subscribers or YouTube creators have to abide by. It's called the National Football League. It's a real fluid process, how we, uh, our workflow and how we go from just an idea to a, a product that we're, we're actually able to put out. And I have tons of footage of guys uh, great, giving great interviews or saying great things, but you have uh, a key player in the background limping or a key player in the background on crutches and he you know crutches on Monday doesn't necessarily mean you don't play on Sunday you have to kind of you know edit yourself and put the camera down and, and and do different things like that if they said something I would say you know don't say it or I wouldn't put it on on the video I mean it, I'm not I'm really not into making those guys look bad I'm into making them look in the best light as possible we decided that we wanted to post our videos and, and put them out there on Friday evenings uh, Saturday mornings when there really wasn't uh, a news flow um, in the football world I would try to get most of my footage on Monday and Tuesday uh, days off half days things like that where guys are in a good mood um, kind of get reaction from the week um, previous um, talk about what's going on in the upcoming week and then uh, Wednesday evening, I had to have that memory card in the FedEx envelope to be able to get to my editor in Arizona. From Wednesday evening or Thursday morning, when he got it, to Friday evening, that was kind of our crunch time deadline. And I would have to view the video, um, see it. And what I would do is the main, the main guys, you know, the Richard Shermans, the John Moffitts, the guys that were kind of staples on the show, I'd actually show them the video before I post it, you know, I just as a respect, you know, do, do you want to re do you want yourself represented like this? It's going to go out to however many people that's, that that subscribe to the channel. And uh most of the time they loved it and then I would tell uh Brandon go ahead and post it and uh voila, we will be on NFL Network uh embedded in the, I'm on nfl.com embedded in their, some of their stories, Pro Football Talk, um some national um, outlets. The great thing about YouTube is you can post it to all your social media sites. So, you know, once we post a video, it goes to, you know, the Real Rob Report, you know, Twitter and Facebook, and then my personal Twitter and Facebook, and, you know, everybody starts to retweet it, and before you know it, it goes viral. In the off season, that's where we try to do more of our features. You know, we sat down with Darrell Revis uh, a few times and kind of dig into some stories or some interesting things that are going on in, in, in guys' lives. Uh, Marshawn Lynch, another, you know, good friend of mine, but he actually calls me up, hey, Mike, you know, let's let's sit down and have something to say. You know what I mean? So the off season I kind of use as more of a feature time. Yeah, the best way to kick off my appearance for this season is without a shirt on. You know yeah, I, mean? yeah, I see you've been working. I see you've been working. I see you've been working. It's actually the worst way to kick it off. <laughs> that format is, has worked out well for me. The very first year I had the cameras in Seattle um, in 2011, Marshawn got on the, on the show and, you know, he kind of said some things. I had to bleep some things out, you know what I mean? But uh, I said some things and he loved it. He said, Mike, look, you know I don't talk to the media, right? But now, that, you know... You, you got a real following, man. People kind of, you know, they see your YouTube videos, man, and they walk up to me on the street and, they, you know, they say things to me. So 
you're kind of the media now, so I'm not going to talk to you ever. Let's create this segment called Messing with Marshawn. Hey, Beast. Everything going good today, Beast? It's hilarious. I mean, we have we have even more outtakes that we haven't showed that uh, you know maybe we'll release another day. The hardest part, really, is catching every edit, catching every curse word of a locker room, catching every naked booty in the lock. You know what I mean? And being able to blur it out, that really was a challenge. It, you know, we had a dance off. Everybody watched it, right? You know, but you know there were guys in the background that because it was so many people, I, I didn't catch. And the Seahawks, you know, they called me laughing. The PR department called me laughing hysterically because we had a linebacker, you know, in the background, totally nude, you know, just laughing, but just watching, you know what I mean? But he was nude and I didn't catch it. What I noticed uh, is that people really, really enjoyed, uh, which kind of, at first I was skeptical of, kind of the shakiness of the camera. Playing in the National Football League, you want to be perfectionist, and I kind of, I wanted it to look like a movie. People. Love the kind of the grassroots of it, the the shakiness, the fact that, you know, I'm not perfect. You know, sometimes I cut a guy's head off, you know, things like that. They loved it because it made it real. I'm older now, so I got to get it really good. You year three, man. You ain't no older. You ain't invested. But I don't I'm feel, older now. Hey, hey, but I don't feel like I did my rookie year. <laughs> That's the beauty of just this platform. Without this platform, I would have to spend $10,000 to create a website that it to even be able to manage this. And then with the analytics, you know, you, you kind of know who you're targeting. You kind of know who's watching your video. I figured out that, you know, my features, I needed to cut down from the 20 minute videos. You know what I mean? Because I, I was losing people at the end. You know, just from those analytics they give us, um, that's valuable information. So when I cut it down to the eight to 12 minute range, you know, we our viewership went up. So all those little things make it very uh, usable platform. <laughs>